Good evening. Welcome to this class webinar, how to evaluate and prioritize appliance energy efficiency policies with MEPS. My name is Steve Fantano. I'm chief of research at CLASP, um, and I'll be your host today. As we know, improving energy efficiency is a critical component to achieving the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement. Policies promoting efficient appliances are some of the most cost-effective methods for mitigating climate change. Transitioning to efficient equipment and appliances on a global scale would reduce electricity use by 1,500 terawatt hours cumulatively by 2030, cutting more than one gigaton of carbon emissions per year and saving more than $200 billion for consumers on energy bills. Sorry. Uh, CLASP serves as a leading international voice and resource for appliance energy efficiency policies and market acceleration initiatives. From advancing the off-grid solar technologies, bringing power to energy impoverished people, to cutting the catastrophic climate impacts of air conditioning, CLASP programs increase uptake of affordable, low impact, high quality appliances. Our climate and clean energy access teams work hand in hand with governments, experts, industry, consumers, donors, and others to propel policies and markets toward the highest quality, lowest resource intensive products possible. We envision a world in which appliances are life changing, low impact, and environmentally responsible. We've worked in more than 100 countries since our inception in 1999, as you can see here. We work hand in hand with governments uh, to structure rigorous energy and quality standards <clears throat> that promote innovation and competition. And we work with manufacturers, consumers, and others to label and deploy standout products. A few of our program activities beyond that are listed here. As you'll see an example of today, our cross-cutting research, online tools, trainings, and stakeholder coalitions make best practices available to everybody, amplifying our efforts and impact. This training webinar will introduce you to our latest tool, MEPSI. CLASP developed MEPSI to make rigorous energy efficiency policy analysis for appliances and equipment accessible to the widest possible global audience. MEPSI is designed to help practitioners compare and prioritize among appliance and equipment policy options. This free online tool displays energy and climate impacts of standards for key energy using products and supports national, regional, and global level analysis. The MEPSI tool includes data for 162 countries and six of the top energy using products, air conditioners, space heating equipment, refrigerator freezers, electric motors, televisions, and ceiling and portable fans. Soon we'll be adding more products to the tool, including lighting, refrigerated display cases, residential hot water heaters, and distri distribution transformers. During this webinar, my colleagues, Matt Malinowski and Rebecca Schloman will walk you through the MEPSI tool and its key features. Matt Malinowski is a senior manager on the class team. Uh, for the past 14 years, he's helped to model and develop efficiency policies in countries as diverse as Indonesia, India, and South Africa, and previously supported the US Department of Energy and the US Environmental Protection Agency in developing standards and labeling policies in the US. Matt will provide an overview of the MEPSI tool the methodology, and core assumptions. Then we'll turn to Rebecca Schloman. Rebecca is, a, Rebecca is a senior associate on the class team since 2018. She's supported the development of policy models for estimating energy emissions and economic impacts of energy efficiency and refrigerants. And she's worked in countries as including Vietnam, Kenya, and many others. <clears throat> Rebecca will lead a training on how users can run detailed analysis with their own custom data will demonstrate how CLASP has leveraged retail surveys, UN com trade statistics, and interview data from the field to develop custom scenarios to evaluate Botswana's refrigerator market. Lastly, we'll end the webinar with an open Q&A. We ask you to ask, uh, request that you ask questions throughout the webinar and that you please use the Q&A feature uh, that you see highlighted here in green. Uh, you're welcome to submit questions either with your name attached or anonymously, and we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible at the end of the webinar. 
A transcript of questions and answers asked and answered during the call will be shared following the call, as well as the presentation materials. And with this, I'd like to hand it over to my colleague, Matt Malinowski. Thank you, Steve, for that introduction. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, really appreciate you joining us today. And I look forward to presenting um, the key features and methodology of the new MEPSI modeling tool. I'll start by just um, going through my, my brief presentation here. Um, First, I'll, I'll try to uh, explain why we're using another model, why we're publishing another model. Um, there are already many tools out there. So um, why look at MEPSI? Why try out MEPSI? What is its purpose and benefits? Um, then I'll, I'll go through the underlying methodology and the data that you'll find in the tool. And lastly, I'll do a quick demo of its key features uh, so that you can get started using it right away. Uh, before handing it over to my colleague, Rebecca. Great, so to liven things up, I'll begin with a poll about the types of analysis that, um, that you're most involved in or most interested in. Uh, as you know, um, policymaking involves many stages, several stages, and analytical tools like MEPSI, and others can, can fit in uh, through those various stages. So if you don't mind, uh, I just put up a poll. Uh, we'll run it for maybe 20, 30 seconds, give you a chance to look through these different stages and look forward to hearing from you um, which ones you are most interested in or involved in. Let's run it for maybe 15 more seconds, 20 more seconds. Great, thank you so much for your responses. They're still coming in here. Okay, great. Well, thank you for participating. Here are the results. Can everybody see them? Hello, yes. Steve. Yeah. Perfect. So, um, yeah, and unsurprisingly, I think as as we expected, um, folks, um, half of the um, participants, or you know, the plurality, and almost the majority. Uh, clicked on several of the above stages uh, with uh, prioritizing opportunities and analyzing cost effective requirements also being being popular choices. Um, that was one of the frustrations that that we've had with existing tools is that they um, th there there's a gap between the tools that um, are able to model the whole world and um, global potential and the ones that that work on one particular product in one particular country sometimes we even have to we have to even use different tools for prioritizing products within a country and then export the assumptions the data import them into another tool so with mepsi we tried to make one tool that allows you to span these different analytical stages from um, doing broad global analysis to identify opportunities to prioritizing within a country, and then taking that further and analyzing different scenarios and, and different uh, options for one single product in one single country. And then lastly, uh, making it easy to share your research and analysis uh, with your stakeholders um, or, or the broader world um, by, by making this um, you know, very graphical and uh, available online so that people can participate and and um, work with you in real time. So that was our, our general guiding method, uh, general guiding principles. Uh, we also looked at features or, or maybe characteristics that the tool needs to have, uh, you know, beyond just what it can do. 
we thought it needs to be really usable, uh, flexible, because policymakers and others will want to try different scenarios. Um, and, and so it needs to be, we need to be able to add to it. Uh, needs to be transparent. So uh, to the extent possible, uh, re be able to see the data, uh, try the different assumptions to, to gain confidence in, in, in the results. Uh, needs to be integrated. That, that just means uh, across these different stages, let the data flow across stages. And lastly, authoritative. Um, so based on um, accepted methodologies and, and the best data that, that, that are available. And lastly, um, we wanted to make this you know, as up-to-date as possible and immediately usable to policymakers and analysts so that they wouldn't have to source their own data, a process that we know uh, can be lengthy and, um, and, and, and just really quite involved. Uh, we wanted to make it ready to go out of the box uh, so that you can use it right now. So I'll, I'll touch on a couple of the, the features here, um, starting with uh, some of the um, front end. Um, our goal again was so that uh, you can start using it right away to support policymaking, to, to make your work faster and easier. And uh, so it, it has a visual interface uh, that includes some of the, the key graphics that we have used on CLASP's climate team and that we know policy makers around the world um, find important and useful. Um, so that, you know, that allows you to do prioritization of countries and appliances, um, different scenarios and, and presentation of, of the, the benefits, paybacks and uh, tons of CO2, just the impacts, right? So it's all about the impact making, um, moving uh, as, as quickly as possible on the policies while, um, you know, making sure that they are robust and, and vetted by stakeholders. And lastly, uh, we, we know that you know, there will be scenarios or, or um, ta just, just steps that we, we, we did not think of. So there's a way to download all the model results so that you can uh, keep on analyzing them in another tool. So who, can Mexi who and how can MEPSI help? Um, these are our three main audiences. Um, policymakers, uh, other analysts, and then lastly, energy efficiency program funders or donors. Um, quickly, I'll just hit on a couple of the key points here. Uh, for policymakers, you can review and prioritize policies in your country. So there, are, uh, there should already be data in there that's um, relevant to your country. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, here the last point, you can download your results uh, for uh, sharing with, with stakeholders or doing other kinds of analyses. Uh, for analysts, you can look at different products. You can load in custom data so that you can, you can change some of the assumptions in the tool. And then for donors, you can really evaluate uh, your investments. Where should you be investing in which countries, which products? As far as the methodology, uh, we're using a, a really time-tested calculation. The model takes in sales, accumulates them over the lifetime of the product, multiplies that by unit energy consumption, uh, which is based on the capacity of the product, its usage in a country. Um, and then finally, from those uh, energy values, calculates costs and, and CO2 impacts. Um, very standard methodology used through, through a variety of models through, throughout um, you know, the decades of energy efficiency program. And then we marry that with up-to-date data, um, sales data from market research firms, um, grid emissions, other kinds of global uh, data from, from authoritative sources like the World Bank, IEA. Um, and then, you know, we hope to cover 160, we have co coverage for 162 countries. We don't always have key data for all the countries. So we um, sometimes, go from key country to in a region and then extrapolate based on the number of households, population, GDP, um, while accounting for climate differences. Where possible, we add in our own data from on the ground market research. And we hope to be in conversation with you uh, as experts in, in your country in, in certain products um, to, to further improve the tool. So, um, you know, I, I, we'll have resources uh, that, that go into this in more detail. 
and uh, I'll, I'll, you know there'll be email addresses. So looking forward to being in touch with you um, on on how we can continue to improve this tool and make it as useful as possible. And then uh, we'll have a couple minutes here. I'll, I'll just briefly show the the front the first screen of the tool, the the global view, uh, so that you can have um, you know kind of get a feel for it. And, and be able to start using it right away. Uh, so can we have just a, a quick poll on, on what country should we look at? And I just picked uh, there are five, six countries. Um, as I mentioned, there are 162. Uh, so you know after, after the webinar, um, of course, Rebecca will we'll, we'll do a, a case study of one, but after the webinar, we can we can take a look at a at another, and um, you know, feel free to 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 try them all out. Okay, just another ten more seconds. Great, thank you. And the winner is India. So let's um, let me change screens here, and go to Mepsi. So here I'm opening. I went to class.ngo/tools/mepsi. Uh, this is our tool landing page. Um, you can launch MEPSI just by clicking this button. That'll open up a new tab uh, with this global interface that, that I uh, just showed on the previous slide. Um, this is our global view. It shows uh, overview of uh, scenario results for uh, the default scenario, which is energy policies in line with what CLASP is uh, generally recommending around the world, just, just um, you know, without, without before doing kind of more detailed work and consultation, um, as well as um, the business as usual. So you can just briefly uh, see what, what, what kind of savings, what kind of reductions are available from um, efficiency policies. Um, you can see, you know, on this is a, is a color map. You can see which countries uh, have the highest energy consumption. And I'll just reload here. Looks like it does. The tool does time out after maybe twenty minutes or so. So just going to reload it. I'm sorry. Uh, so, pardon me. Great. Thanks for your patience. On the right here, we have, uh, the energy consumption by product over time. Uh, as you can see, space heating um, it dominates um, globally uh, with motors uh, of the six uh, end uses that we've analyzed. And then here we have the top five countries, um, you know, with China and the United States um, among the uh, highest energy users, again, for the, for the six appliances that, that we've analyzed so far. Um, you can look uh, here on the left, um, we have different variables. Uh, I'll, I'll put in CO2 emissions. Previously it was energy. And, and so you can see that now, you know, once you factor in uh, the grid emissions, uh, we have electric motors actually surpassing space heating. And, and here in the country view, uh, China surpassing the United States. Um, you can click in a country. For instance, again, oh, I'm sorry, we're gonna look at India. And you can see this graph now is, is filtered. Gosh, I'm sorry, that's unexpected.
possible we're having uh, more usage here than, than we expected. So clicking into India, we'll have, um, you can see the appliances are, are reordered. Uh, you can see the impact of air conditioning and, and its growing trend over time. And then lastly, um, you'll see that now the, the comparison, country comparison has been reordered uh, for the region. So you can compare the top five within the region. Um, I'll, I'll end my presentation here uh, so that Rebecca has some time as well. And, uh, but welcome you to um, continue exploring the tool and uh, look forward to your questions uh, at the Q&A. Thank you so much. Great, thank you very much, Nat. So I will now be taking us through how to conduct custom analysis in MEPSI. And um, yeah, I'll, first I will guide you through the various inputs into MEPSI that users can modify. And then I will demonstrate running MEPSI for the domestic refrigeration market in Botswana. Botswana is a country that CLASP has recently collected significant retailer and household survey data for, um, specifically on domestic refrigerating appliances. So this is an opportunity to show how the results can vary when you have more detailed information. So here you can see the screen that will appear after you select the Run Detailed Analysis button on the home page that Matt spent some time showing us. Um, there are a number of inputs that you can modify on this page um, to affect the analysis. This um, inc includes things like the year in which the hypothetical efficiency policy is implemented, as well as your assumptions around annual sales or shipments, um, as we like to call it, as well as the equipment data. Um, the information about how efficient a product is, what its average price is. And also you can change some of the kind of um, national macroeconomic parameters like the consumer discount rate, as well as the, um, the inputs related to the electrical grid, like the grid emissions factor, for instance. So, Getting started with running your detailed analysis, as I mentioned, you'll select the run detailed analysis button on that map that Matt was showing us. Um, and once you're there, it, the first thing you will see is the, are these three boxes, scenario, policy dates, and optional parameters. Under the scenario section, you can select the country and the product for which you would like to run the analysis. Um, so in this case, we'll be doing Botswana and we'll be doing refrigerator freezers. Under the policy date section, you can adjust the period of analysis. So MEPSI can run analysis from 2005 to 2030 or for shorter periods within that time frame. You can adjust the, so that's the analysis start year and the analysis end year. You can see another date in that box, which is the policy dates year, the policy effective year. The policy effective year refers to the year in which your hypothetical efficiency policy will be implemented. So the first year that that policy is fully in effect and impacting the market. The last field you'll see on the first screen is the optional parameters section. And here is just where you can select which optional parameters you would like to modify when conducting your custom analysis. So once you've selected those optional parameters, you'll see more fields appear on the screen and I'll show you that in the app itself in just a few minutes. But when you want to run this custom analysis, there's data that you'll want to collect or maybe there's data you already have. So the first question is to know your market size. So MEPSI calculates stock of installed products in each year based on the shipments data, as Matt showed us earlier. Um, 
So shipments data essentially refers to the sales in units of a given product. So this is an estimation of the market size year on year. MEPSI will rely on the default data that CLASP has collected via market research firms and some of our own research, unless the user inputs their own shipments um, values. And MEPSI is very sensitive to the shipments values. Obviously, if, you're, if you estimate your market is quite small or you estimate your market is quite high, it's going to impact the results you get. So this is a very um, important input to try and get the best data for when you're running a custom detailed analysis. Um, and, you know, the, as I mentioned, the MEPC conducts analysis on a time frame from 2005 to 2030, so the user can input shipments between 2005 and 2030 currently. So some common sources for shipments data for those on the call who are um, analysts who conduct this type of modeling um, and are curious where we get some of our data from. Common sources for class when we're conducting um, detailed country level analysis are, include customs data. Um, this, can, this can come from UN Comtrade, it can come directly from a customs authority in the country, but this can be a helpful um, approximation of sales when you don't have sales, but it really only works for countries that are primarily imports based. Um, other options include surveys and interviews with industry regarding their sales volumes and industry and market research reports. Another feature that is not currently in MEPSI but will be coming soon will be the option to estimate, a, to assign a proportion of the annual sales to the used appliance market. This, um, this is an option we're going to be building out. And you know, as many of you on the call will know, energy efficiency policies like minimum energy performance standards only regulate new equipment in most cases. Um, so it's important to have an understanding of what proportion of the market is going to actually be impacted by your policy. So the next section is defining product characteristics. So here is on the left, you can see the fields that you'll be able to modify with respect to the average equipment lifetime of the product you're analyzing, as well as the energy efficiency scenarios. So as Matt mentioned, we have multiple scenarios. There are default scenarios. And here you can see what the defaults are for Botswana under a business as usual, which would be no new energy efficiency policies. An efficiency policy case, which as Matt mentioned, is based off of kind of um, what class would generally recommend for the region. And then the best available technology, which looks at um, if you were able to transition the market exclusively to the best products available now, that what would the efficiency level be? So here we're saying 123 kilowatt hours per year. So these are our default assumptions for Botswana. You can see that we've assumed the average equipment lifetime is for refrigerating appliances is about little under 18 years. And these are the values that you can change. What you'll see here as well under the scenario assumptions section is that you can also input data for price. MEPSI does not come um, with price data programmed in due to the high variation between markets. But if you are conducting detailed analysis, if you've done retailer surveys or online research and have a good understanding of what the prices are for the for model for products at the efficiency levels you're modeling, then you can input this and it will help you to calculate life cycle cost. So sources for some of this information for the um, average equipment lifetime, which can also be an important input. Um, this is very hard to come by this information, but you can find information by speaking to manufacturers. Generally, you wanna get some information from consumers as well. Um, because consumers might use a product longer than a manufacturer would recommend. So the last section of inputs that you can modify currently are on the energy sector data and the economic data. So if we look to the right on the economic data, this is where we can adjust the consumer discount rate. The consumer discount rate is used for life cycle cost analysis. 
um, this is something that you can adjust if you think the consumer discount rate is too low, too high. Um, maybe you have information from a national statistics bureau or from banks within the country. This is a good parameter to adjust if you're really interested in um, improving the accur accuracy of the life cycle cost analysis. On the left, there, there's the larger table of energy sector data inputs. Here you can change um, you can change the assumptions for the grid emissions factor, for the average price of electricity per kilowatt hour, um, heat rate, transmission and distribution loss, and then for the product and then for um, heating fuel price and heating fuel emissions factor, these are two inputs that you can modify. In this case, where I'll be talking through talking us through refrigerators in Botswana, they don't apply. These two um, factors, the ones you can see at the bottom of this box, only apply to space and water heating, where equipment may be powered by alternative fuel sources than grid electricity. So electricity prices are. Um, as well important for understanding the life cycle costs of the equipment under different policy scenarios. We, some great sources for these include utilities. Um, in countries where there's multiple utilities, it might be easier to get the statistic from an energy ministry or um, department of energy. Um, as well, there's a lot of annual reports from international agencies like the IEA and others that can provide some great statistics on energy um, on the grid in different countries. So what you see here is um, what the table and the chart that you will see when running your custom analysis. Um, so right now we are showing the default consumer impacts results for Botswana. So this is what the results look like before I input any custom data. And what I want to highlight for you here, I'm not going to dig too deeply into each result right now, but what I want to highlight is that right now on the default assumptions, as I mentioned in a previous slide, we don't have default prices. So when you see this chart that is showing life cycle cost, it's only showing the life cycle operating cost. It's not incorporating the um, upfront purchase price. And as we go through um, the demo with the custom analysis, I will be using prices and you'll be able to see how this graph graphic changes when it includes that upfront purchase price. On this, on this slide, you can see um, a screenshot of the default results, <clears throat> the default national energy and emissions impacts results for Botswana. So on MEPSI, there are, you'll have, when you run your analysis, you'll be able to see this table and the chart on the right in the platform itself. The chart on the right will not only show you CO2 reduction, but you can toggle it between energy reduction and a chart of the estimated stock, the number of appliances in use. On the left, you'll have a table of results that summarize the annual energy reduction and CO2 reduction in your in 2030, or if you modify the end date of the analysis, it'll reflect that. Um, as well, you'll see cumulative energy reduction um, and cumulative CO2 reduction estimates based off of your full analysis period. So by default, the full analysis period is 2022 to 2030. I'll be modifying that for our input for Botswana today. So the once you've run your analysis and you've reviewed your results and you want to save it, you can actually um, at the bottom of the screen, as I'll show you, you can download your model results. And once you click the download model results, it might take a few seconds. Um, Pepsi is a big program, but um, once it's downloaded, you'll receive you'll have two files. One is the report model inputs which is a summary of all of your inputs that you used in the analysis. So this is great if you're running multiple analyses and you need to keep track of what inputs correspond to what results. And as well, you'll receive a CSV file of all of the outputs 
of MEPC. So this will enable you to, outside of the program, recreate whatever graphics you've seen in MEPC or maybe create different graphics, find new ways to present the information. So that is kind of a guide between a guide into um, a peek into what the inputs are that you can change. Now I'd like to briefly just discuss how you can put this custom analysis to use. And the example we'll be using is refrigerating appliances in Botswana. So in Botswana, we've done a lot of data collection over the past few months, and we've collected data. The largest effort was on retailer surveys and household surveys. So these retailer surveys and household surveys, essentially we sent, had our partners in Botswana went out to stores, they went out to houses, they surveyed consumers, they surveyed retailers to ascertain at a model level, all of the information we need to develop really targeted assumptions around the level of efficiency in Botswana's market and the prices for these products in Botswana. So our surveys were looking at all domestic refrigerating appliances, whether they be refrigerator only, refrigerator freezer, or chest freezer. And this is this matches with what MEPSI looks at. So MEPSI looks at refrigerator freezer as that's the name that covers the whole refrigeration market for domestic refrigeration at least. And so through our retailer surveys, we collected data on type of product, storage volume, the defrosting technology, annual energy consumption and price. And all of this is used to help us in, to help inform our, um, our analysis. As well, I used UN Comtrade statistics to get an estimate on annual market size. Um, this is net import volume, imports minus exports and as well stakeholder interviews and with the government and major importers help to corroborate some of the national level statistics and helped us to identify appropriate electricity tariffs for impacts analysis. So um, as I mentioned, I'm customizing some of the assumptions. So the assumptions that I've customized for this analysis are the policy effective year, the shipments data, which I get from UN Comtrade, the electricity price, which comes from our survey, from comes from our interviews and surveys, and the scenarios that we are running, the business as usual, efficiency policy, and best available technology scenarios. So now I'll just quickly navigate to the MEPSI tool so that we can see the analysis in action. All right, so now you can see the. You've got to switch your switch your share. Oh, I thought. Oh, here we go. Thank you. So now we can see the Mepsi tool that Matt was showing us on the home page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to. I have two options. I can either select Run Detailed Analysis, or I can find Botswana on the map and select Run Detailed Analysis from there. Both will take me to this page which as I mentioned, to enable us to conduct the custom analysis, we have to enable all of our optional parameters fields. Used appliance market isn't available right now, it's a coming soon feature. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disable that. And now I'm going to input my data. So I mentioned that I had different assumptions for shipments values. My assumptions are a bit larger than the ones in that have been built into MEPSI because our analysis on Botswana is new. So I'm going to input those shipment values. I just copied and pasted from a spreadsheet I have. I'm not modifying the lifetime. 
but I do have different assumptions for price and energy consumption. So my energy, my business as usual uh, price, I'm assuming that this refrigerating appliance would cost 473 US dollars. And based off of my analysis of Botswana's market, I believe the typical energy consumption is that per year is actually a bit, a bit lower at 332 kilowatt hours per year. Similarly, I've developed my own custom assumptions for the efficiency policy scenario and the best available technology policy scenario. Oh. So I'm just going to copy all of my assumptions in. And the last segment I'm changing is the electricity price. So I'll modify the electricity price. It's actually a bit higher, about around 12 cents per, do, per kilowatt hour. And right now I'm modeling in USD. If I wanted to, I could change this to the local currency, Botswana Pula. And when I change that, I would need to re-input my, um, my prices and my electricity price in the appropriate currency. So now that I've input all of my assumptions, I'm going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and select calculate. Once I select calculate, it takes me to the page from which I took screenshots earlier. And on this page, we can see all of our results. And what I'll first draw your attention to are the life cycle costs. So as I mentioned previously, we didn't have any price information. So all we saw were these operating costs, what you see in brown on the graph. And now our life cycle cost is being calculated in, to include the purchase price. So this allows us to get a more accurate understanding of full life cycle costs, full savings, and what the approximate payback time would be. Right now we're looking at a longer payback time for the efficiency scenarios that I've modeled. So maybe this would be, um, this would be the type of finding that you could take and say, oh, the payback times look like they'll be long under this policy. Maybe there's some room to explore incentives um, or some other program to reduce the cost of the upfront purchase of a more efficient piece of equipment. Now, if I scroll down, we can see the national impact results. What I've gotten from my, um, from my custom analysis, I'm seeing actually slightly higher um, savings, higher consumption and higher savings. And this is because I've modified my assumptions around shipments um, as well as modified some of my assumptions around the efficiency levels. But as I mentioned, the scenarios I ended up coming up with for efficiency levels were pretty similar to what's pre-programmed in the MEPSI. So most of the difference is going to be in the shipments value, unless you have a policy scenario with a wide difference on the energy consumption assumptions. Um, as I mentioned, you can toggle your results between CO2 reduction, energy reduction, and appliances in use. This can be a helpful check um, if you're experimenting with um, your assumptions around shipments values, looking at appliances in use and understanding how your assumption around lifetime can impact that will allow you to um, kind of eyeball this chart and say, does that seem realistic? Maybe the appliances in use are too high, maybe they're too low. So these are the results that you can get from MEPSI. This is an example of how you can enter all of your data to run custom analysis. And when you're done, as I mentioned, you can download your model results and um, go forth um, with whatever next level of analysis you wish to do. So I will return to our presentation. Sorry, that's this. And that kind of concludes our demo and I'll hand it over to Steve um, for his remarks. Thank you, Rebecca. And thank you, Matt, for the detailed introduction. Uh, we have quite a 
quite a large crowd here today uh, participating and learning about this tool. So uh, we've got uh, a number of very detailed questions. Uh, unfortunately, we won't have time to address all of them during this call, but what we can do is take uh, all of the questions from the Q&A and respond to them. Uh, those that we can't discuss today, we'll respond to um, in, in one place. Uh, we'll create some sort of Q&A or, or response document. So we get back to all of you who have asked questions today. You're welcome to continue to um, put your questions in the Q&A. We'll take a few of them now. Um, and we also have, uh, if you could go to the next slide, Rebecca, we have a, an email address and inbox uh, set up to field your questions, uh, mepsi at clasp.ngo, which I encourage you all to use uh, in the future. So let's take a few questions now. Um, I will do my best to try to group these together. There's quite a, quite a range of, of detail as well as strategic questions here. Um, Matt, maybe I will go uh, to you first. There are a few questions around the frequency of updates, uh, the, ref the, the ability to model refrigerants um, and some of our plans for the future of MEPSI. Can you uh, quickly discuss, discuss our update plans, um, both for feature updates and, and ongoing uh, data updates? Sure, thank you, Steve. Uh, our plans right now are to do a, a quarterly update with any class source data. So if we release a new study in a, in a given country, uh, we plan to get that into the tool uh, within the next quarter. Um, in addition, a lot of the databases that we are using are updated on an annual basis. Uh, so that would be kind of the natural refresh cycle for, uh, for some of the bigger assumptions like grid emissions or um, you know, population or GDP of countries. Um, and lastly, we would also target that annual cycle to add any bigger features such as uh, refrigerants, um, you know, uh, by the end of uh, this year, early next year, um, uh, being able to modify uh, product efficiency using their parameters such as SEER or EER versus the UEC, those, those kinds of feature updates would be on an annual cycle. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> next, let's see. Uh, can we uh, question here about the U4E model tiers for covered products. Matt or Rebecca, would you like to discuss how, how we've um, implemented, uh, implemented the standards levels uh, in a little bit more detail here? Sure, I, I can, I can um, discuss that, Rebecca, if that's okay. Um, we, we have been in uh, coordination with uh, the U4E's uh, consultants when developing this tool, and, and we've uh, checked our, our results against theirs as, as a validation. And in, in some categories, uh, we are using the U4E uh, tiers directly. Uh, so that's refrigerators and air conditioners. Um, you know, in, in others, it, that there may be some differences, but to the extent uh, possible, we have relied on the U4E tiers. Thank you for that. Let's see, so much to choose from here. Um, Rebecca, could you speak a little bit about the plan? There was a question uh, towards the end here around compliance rates. Could you uh, give us a few comments on uh, some of our plans around developing uh, compliance research and compliance data as a, as a way to uh, input that into the tool calculations as well? Yeah, I, I can I can share a few insights. Not much though. Um, so right now there is nothing built into the model around compliance rates, but CLASP has a growing um, compliance program, and we're working on a strategy to essentially develop a scorecard for compliance um, in different countries, and then the results of that scorecard could be built in um, into MEPSI to get a rough estimation of what we think the um, potential non-compliance rate would be. Unfortunately, without really real broad testing in all of these countries, we can't um, get a truly accurate um, compliance statistic. So that's what we'll be working on in the coming year or two. Thank you. Um, I'll take another question myself. Uh, there was a question in the, the Q&A around the CO2 impacts of off-grid appliances, which 
are not factored in at the moment uh, in MEPSI, but we are at class uh, through one of our other programs, Efficiency for Access, developing uh, a separate tool that will evaluate CO2 impacts from avoided diesel and, and petrol genset emissions uh, for off-grid appliances. So stay tuned for that and uh, feel free to email us for more information uh, on that if you have that interest. Matt, I will pass another question to you uh, around the detailed methodology. Uh, there was a question here for those who wish to review the underlying equations and approach. Uh, we've got some documentation underway. Uh, could, you, could you speak a little bit more about that? Sure. If you go to the MEPSI landing page uh, at class.ngo um, slash tools slash MEPSI, uh, so, so uh, kind of, you know, if you add on to the, to the link, uh, the last link there on the slide, um, at the bottom of the page, you'll find a methodology document that details the, the key assumptions that I um, summarized during my presentation. Um, and then, of course, happy to work with uh, anybody directly to compare the methodology and compare notes. And, and we'll, we, we'll be publishing more on that as well, uh, so a more, even more detail. Uh, so hope to be in touch with everybody throughout the year on that. Thank you. Um, Rebecca, another question uh, for you here, based on your experience with the tool and the demo with Botswana, uh, there's a question around the sources of sales unit data. Um, you know, where could you speak again, maybe about the, the use of default data in the tool and where we've provided the flexibility for users to, uh, to update according to their own uh, needs if they have better information. Yeah, so MEPSI is pre-populated with um, stock, stock estimates that are based off of sales we acquired primarily from market research firms. Um, so we went through a data collection effort looking for what, what we could find that was the best available um, data that covered a large set of countries. Um, so that's how that that's where the default data is. And unfortunately we can't share the default sales due to confidentiality and rights, <laughs> rights really, um, since we purchased that from those firms, but we can share the stock projections. Um, so when you download your results, even off of the default scenario, you'll be able to see the stock assumptions um, that are calculated from those sales. And then in terms of sources for getting better information, um, sales can be very difficult to estimate. Um, for imports only markets, a lot of times we'll rely on customs data to get an approximation of the market size. However, if there are um, a fair number of importers and manufacturers that are willing to share that information, that can be a great source um, because they generally understand the market quite well um, and what those sales might be. Um, but it, it is a challenge and um, it's something that if you have better information, you know, or you don't think that the market research firm information is correct, we recommend, you know, revising it based off of your better information. Hope that answered it. Yes, thank you. Matt, another question for you. Um, in terms of prices, uh, there was a good suggestion here around price databases um, and using local prices as a default. Um, is that something we've considered or do you have any suggestions from experience on where price data might be sourced um, beyond some defaults that we could potentially include in the future? Uh, good, good question, Steve. Um, I, I have seen scalable approaches uh, of say using web scraping to pull prices uh, you know, in a local context. I think the challenge is that you know, this is something that will really vary country by country. Um, so, you know, welcome any suggestions on, on how we can do this in a way that, that we can cover, um, you know, a, a good, good range of countries. Uh, yeah, we, we didn't feel comfortable just pick, taking prices from one country and, and assuming that that is the price elsewhere. Uh, but if, if uh, folks have any suggestions on, on how to do that so that we can provide this information uh, by, by default, that, that'd be great. And another question for you, Matt, uh, here, a common approximation for shipment data is to use changes in ownership levels and average lifespan. Do we offer the option to use this as a proxy 
uh, for shipments or is there ability to um, do that in the future? Uh, that that is uh, thank you. That that is a feature that has been uh, requested by um, by some potential users um, to be able to input the stock directly. I guess ownership would be a, another way to get get into that. Uh, right now, that is not an option. Um, but uh, yeah, something something definitely to consider. So thank you for that suggestion. And. Rebecca, you had in, in indicated a question uh, that you wanted to answer around small island nations. Um, could, you, could you respond here? The question is uh, around the user interface uh, to MEPSI and the ability to actually visualize small, small islands in the, in the context of the large image of the, the entire globe. Yeah, so for the small island states, obviously it's difficult to see those on that giant world map. Um, I would just say that the world map is a adjustable, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, but we are working on implementing a drop down field so that you can select those um, smaller countries more easily um, as opposed to needing to select them from the map. So that's something that should be implemented in the next few weeks just to make that easier. Thank you. Um, with that, uh, we have two minutes left. So I would like to wrap up, I apologize. Uh, there are some really excellent questions that we did not get to answer live, but we will uh, make every effort to respond to those um, uh, following this meeting, probably put together a document so, so everyone can see the answers uh, to all of the questions. As I mentioned, we welcome your ongoing input and suggestions for the MEPSI tool. This was and continues to be a big, uh, a big endeavor for us at CLASP, and obviously there are always myriad ways to improve the tool, its usability, its data, its assumptions, its methodology. So uh, we really do uh, hope for all of your input and experiences as you as you get to know the tool uh, and try to put it into practice. There is the uh, email address that we've listed here uh, for all of that feedback so we can keep it in one place. That's mepsi at clasp.ngo. Uh, Last question here I see coming in, is MEPSI free for anyone to use? Yes, absolutely uh, it is. And that is uh, entirely the point we're, we're sharing this as broadly and openly as possible. So we do want this tool to, to grow and evolve as the needs of the sector grow and evolve. Um, and I, I can't encourage you enough to, to be in touch with us. Um, we're interested in your, your thoughts around features, around the functionality of the tool, around the user interface, really everything is, um, is uh, continues to be under development, and we'll, we hope to release updates on an ongoing basis for the next several years uh, and well into the future. Um, we've also, uh, depending on the response and the interest, we could also consider developing a, an expert user group or, or focus group uh, to, to help us try out new features and functions uh, before they're deployed. So if you're interested in something like that, please do let us know that as well. Uh, once again, thank you all uh, for coming today. Uh, quite, a, quite a large uh, group of participants. So we hope this uh, MEPSI is, is used far and wide. Um, and once again, uh, look forward to your feedback. Thanks also one more time to, to Matt Malinowski and Rebecca Schulman for their excellent presentations. Um, and I'll ask you all, if you could, uh, to please fill out the exit survey before you go and uh, we'll be in touch with you soon. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.